when you wake up in the middle of the night in that cold sweat where you're worrying about something that's happening in your business, I think we could all agree that that is eased when you know you have the right team. But how do you get the right team? And then how do you keep them? Well, in this episode, I'm going to introduce to you a tool that almost guarantees when you do it, a stickier culture. Our guest, Leslie Jones, is the CEO and founder of The Spiral Method. It's a facilitation methodology that I have personally witnessed dozens of times work its magic on a group of people. And for those of you that are committed to being the best leader that you can be, today's episode is really designed to just introduce you to another tool in your tool shed for building a strong, connected team. Leslie Jones, welcome to How I Turned the Corner. Beautiful. Thank you, Kendra. It's great to be here. That was a great way to speak of spiral. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's start off here by saying like, this is not a quick fix. This is not something that you just like do once and then suddenly you've transformed your team. But I will definitely say that what I've personally experienced with this is a remarkable way to start building connection with people that either you don't like that much or you're not just, you don't know. And so can you just introduce the spiral method at a, you know, at a high level? Like what is it as a facilitation methodology? Yeah, good. I, I mean, the um, spiral method is basically setting up a container with agreements and guidelines so that there's psychological safety so that people can fully express themselves and all of their wisdom, all their full contribution can be present in a team environment in a very short period of time. That's really what it is. Yeah. And my experience with this has been, for those of you that are listening, a very unique way of bringing, drawing people out in a way where they feel comfortable sharing and interacting with the people around them. And then once that safety is in place, as we've talked about on other episodes, once that safety is in place, the, there's magic that happens on a team. It's where like where innovation can start to happen, where mistakes are allowed and turn into beautiful oopses, so to speak, um, where people feel comfortable going to other people in, on the team and being able to say like, can you help me or can I help you? It's really creates like a deeper connection with people. Right. So what prompted, like, tell us a little bit around some of your, your success with this, because you've been doing this for many, many years, and you've seen some pretty remarkable transformations over the years with people. Can you yeah. share just a couple of the fun ones? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, first, I would say, I think, as you were speaking, Kendra, I'm, you know, so much clutter gets built up in our relationships and on our teams. And clutter is like, someone is always late. Or, oh, here they go again. They're going to take the floor and keep talking and no one else is going to have any chance to talk. Or, you know, all the kind of things that happen in human relationships get magnified in, in, in any group of people, right? So one of the things that we're doing in Spiral is getting that stuff out from underneath the rug so that it's not impacting the experience and the communication and the joy and the partnership and the teamwork that, and the accountability, and the, as you said, the innovation. And so, you know, I remember once um, I had a CEO who, who he had social anxiety and he did not like to do big group meetings at all. And, and he met, rare, rarely even appreciated doing one-on-one -on -one meetings. And so the part of the company culture was our CEO um, doesn't care about us. He, he doesn't like us. And he really, this is a profit-driven business. Well, that was the last thing that was true about this man. And through the setting up a spiral, setting up psychological safety through a spiral, he was able to share about his social anxiety and the whole story about him changed. The entire culture changed because of that level of vulnerability. And that came from, you know, from the CEO normally would never tell his people that he had social anxiety. Right. Like that was one one beautiful example. There's many, many examples um, to, you know, what do you want me to think of some others right well, now? Well, you know, I think it's important to kind of talk about the clutter because I do think a lot of us, I mean, none of us escape a relationship without clutter. 
But when you have a little bit more of a, I would say a communication model, which part of spiral method is that is a, is a, is a methodology and a model for like saying and having more curiosity with people, it helps yeah. clear out that clutter. And so, you know, I would say like theme through some of the interviews I've done over the years now, you know, some of the, the clutter I think people yeah. experience would be um, that per I can't, that I can't trust that that person's doing their job if I can't see them. Yeah. Right. We see that right now a lot with remote yep. work and hybrid work and in-person yep. um, or clutter could be, um, well, I don't think I really like that person because they remind me of my brother-in-law who I can't stand. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> Good. Exactly. There are all right there are the mental clutter that our decisions that we've made about this other person and we keep them quiet. We don't we don't check in and find out what work they're doing usually. We don't let them know that we have this decision or this clutter about them and it's getting in our way of relating with them or doing good work with them, right? So the the communication method is that decluttering where we move things out of the way so we can just say, hey, we're past deadline on something. What can we do about that? You know? Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> yeah. But you can't do that. You can't lean into, I think, a conversation that clears out clutter, for example, without feeling comfortable with that individual. And that what this model does is really open up that comfortability comfortability, by doing a few things. And so let's kind of lead into like, you know, what, what exactly do you do in a spiral session? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing, the first thing that's important is that we have a whole set of agreements that the group has agreed to on how to operate in relation. So not, you know, the, the relational operating agreements, like no gossip, like when I call someone out on something, there's not going to be a consequence for that straight talk, things like that, that give us the, the freedom to be honest instead of squashing ourselves. And so that's a big reason that people don't, um, speak freely is because there's going to be a consequence to speaking freely. Either people don't, aren't going to like them. They're going to think that they're, um, you know, too aggressive. They're going to stop working with them so freely. There's going to be some, something that has people withhold. So the last game, we play three games in this, in the foundation of spiral method, we play three games. And the last one is called withholds. And we've cultivated such a space of safety that people can say the things that they're holding on to that they normally would never say to each other for the sake of moving it out of the way so we can get to work, the work at hand. We can get to the real conversations that we should be having as a team. Yeah. And the first, the opening game or the opening um, experience is also lovely, which is a facilitated conversation um, or, or kind of finish the sentence, right? Where you are, where the facilitator who's been trained in this method mm -hmm. comes up with questions that are going to start drawing out some of the things that are cluttering the relationships. But it could start off by saying something like, today I feel, or a highlight of this week is, and you, you zoom around the room or zoom around or actually go around the room if you're physically together. And then people start to say how they are. And, and it, if when the first part time someone says, I feel crummy, hmm. it like opens it up to everyone else to say, Oh, actually I'm not feeling that great either. Or the highlight of this week was that I was able to do something amazing. Right. And it, it creates a little spark of, of joy for the rest of the group, things like that. And it sounds, I just want to communicate with the listeners. Like it sounds so simple. Mm -hmm. But it is a remarkable experience. And um, I will say, like, I was a little dubious the first time around when I first spiraled with you. And now I've known, you know, we've done this dozens and dozens of times together. And I cannot still put my finger on why this works so well. And Do you so have... <laughs> what? <laughs> everyone, every, I just did a session and people are like, it, the anxiety starts coming up and like, what? what do you, you know... This is different than anything that I've ever experienced. And so everyone's very heightened. And and I say, when we, we talk about being vulnerable, everyone's not going to run to the table to be vulnerable, but it, it, that it's the thing that we all want. And so we go slowly around and ask the kind of questions that pull things out and find out what's going on in people's personal lives, what keeps them up at night, 
what they're proud of, what they're excited about, what they want, how they want to be remembered. And after 15 minutes, because we move pretty quickly, we have a whole, everyone has exhaled and is like, oh, I can be myself. Oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Everyone else is experiencing all the stuff that I'm experiencing as a human being and as a leader. That's the magic of it. That, you know, it is setting up the structure so that people can exhale and realize that we're all in this thing called life together. And leaders especially are um, on the skinny branches by themselves, usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really amazing. And then the second, um, ex ex the second game or the second experience with Spiral Method is then putting people on the hot seat. So during that that opening, when you are asking the questions, inevitably someone will say something that is creating curiosity for the rest of the group. Like, I want to hear more about that. Um, so you might again might be something that's happened this week or happened in their life or that they're struggling with. And so we can then, you then will request that that person goes on the hot seat and basically talk about what's going on and, and allow the rest of the group to ask curious questions that really ends up illuminating for that person that's in the hot seat, what they might even need to do or that's what right. they're mm -hmm. And so we're used to asking agenda questions instead of curiosity questions, which is a very limited way of conversing and getting to know someone valuable. It's just one form of asking questions. And that's the way we usually do it. So with the hot seat, we're focusing on curiosity. And the, those kinds of questions start opening something up in the person on the hot seat. And they are they get to see themselves in a new way and see things about their leadership and their thinking and their way of being and their work in a whole different way. So when we do this with teams, right, there's the person, we can start asking questions that we're curious about, about that person's work that we might not otherwise be asking if we were sitting in a regular meeting, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, no, it's amazing. So, so kind of, as I said at the beginning, this isn't like a quick fix, right? This is an ongoing process that ideally you would run with a team over multiple sessions to get the, where you can kind of go deeper and deeper and deeper. But really what you're also trying to do is get more and more people certified in this methodology so that people can run it internally in their own companies. Is that still a process for you? Yeah. So, yeah. So when I had originally designed this to train others and certify others to deliver spiral, it really, that is the main point is that a company can spiral without any outside support or facilitation. So mm -hmm. once everyone is trained, you begin to have a spiral culture. And a spiral culture, what that means is that um, curiosity is part of the norm, in, in a, which is where innovation comes from, uh, right? It's not about looking good or being smart. It's about learning and growth. Um, we are practicing straight talk and efficiency when we spiral and getting to the heart of the matter and, and having all of our humanity and our contribution be available, not just a portion of it where we're looking good. So as we spiral, we are training. Everyone who spirals every time is training and up-leveling as a whole company and as a culture, the individuals and the groups are up-leveling their way of participation, which in increases results. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think then as a kind of a, important point then is like, if, if this is the sort of thing that you are interested in, then you need to probably get someone certified in this methodology so they can help run it and really maintain it. Cause I will say after, cause I've been through the certification process, full disclosure here. Um, I was sort of curious if I could figure out what the secret sauce was, honestly, but <laughs> okay. like, I don't get it. I gotta know what this in this juice. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, um, once you go through, like it is, it's a, it's not complex, but it does require the certification. I don't think it's just, it's not, it's not 
for everyone. Like it's something you need to know how to do because yes. if you don't know how to kind of hold the container, as Leslie said at the beginning, I do feel like it can kind of backfire on you. But yeah. the whole certification process really teaches that. How do you hold the container and then how do you actually facilitate the games or the experiences for people is what I always call them as experiences. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I, as you're saying that, I'm just thinking about, um, it is simple and what, the facilitators that have gone through the program say things like, I never question what to do when I go lead a presentation anymore. I feel confident. I don't have silly icebreakers that don't really connect to the whole mission. Um, I can guarantee that I can create safety and get people to open up and it doesn't feel like pulling teeth, things like that. So the, um, Again, the method is very simple. And whenever I go lead it, even 20, you know, I've just been 20 years now, I get so excited because I know all I have to do is do the method. I don't get really nervous before presentations or facilitating groups. I just get excited because I know how valuable it's going to be for the people involved. So when we facilitate people inside of companies, it's, it's usually not the person in power. There's, it, it's going to be someone more um, neutral, well-respected and well-liked. Not that the CEO or the person in power can't be those things, but inevitably power cr creates a differential that is, we don't need to navigate. So um, yeah, we'll pick maybe someone in HR or a senior leader that is um, really connected to the group and committed to this kind of culture work. And we'll be able to set that neutrality and that safety for everyone. Hmm. So what is the best way to get in touch with you? Like, how can people find the spiral method? Right now, my email is leslie at spiralmethod.com. It's L-E-S-L-I-E at spiralmethod.com. And um, the website has a lot of writing about the value of spiral method. So it's a good, it's more of a brochure site right now. So just to read up on it. It's a great place to go, but an email is perfect. That's awesome. Leslie, thank you so much for introducing this to our listeners today. I really appreciate you doing this. Yeah. Your enthusiasm is so exciting, Kendra. I love it.